Dude, oh, but oh, I'm all set up here, ready to go. I also have my Dremel and I have a gold nib fountain pen. This is the Wingsung 630 with the 14 karat gold. Number eight size nib writes quite well, but I want to change how it writes. So you, you got to do some work. So this is what the little Dremel tool here is for. I'm going to grind down the tip of this nib. I have a couple other pens in the back I'm going to do as well. We want to do some more pens, but it is very tough by just squinting to see those tiny details need some magnification. And I got the idea when I was at the dentist, he was wearing stuff like this. Of course, those were like a $400 version. This is the $25 version from AliExpress. And uh, it's got some quality glass that's in there. Uh, one thing I've noticed so far, I've only tried them out just a couple times. I haven't ground anything, but just looking at nibs and whatnot, there's a lot of what's called chromatic aberration. So it's essentially a distortion in color and it usually happens around edges. And so you might think, oh, if the color's off, well, no, it kind of distorts the edge, makes it wavy. So we'll see if this will work on the nibs. So I quickly did a before writing sample with the nib how it is. Come back to that and see how we compare when I'm done. And here is a quick close up of the nib before the grind as well. So tough to hold it steady, but you see it has that sort of blade grind. So I'm gonna grind it back flat kind of square it off and then smooth this into a cursive italic nib. And here is the one off the Jinhao X159 that I did earlier. You can see that slit isn't perfect, but that's just the difference in how that tip's gonna look, which will change how it writes. And just like that, I blew through the tipping. I took a moment to pause after great frustration, took a look with better magnification, and there is the slightest hair of hair of tipping still there. I have some seal nibs to do. I don't know why I didn't do those first. I just wanted to do this one. So I have the absolute thinnest sliver of tipping before I hit the gold, because if you remove all the tipping, you're writing just with gold, this will wear out so much faster. So I think I might be able to just save this nib. I'll get you a close up afterwards, but you'll see a little bit of shiny, shiny little steel type material up there. So I'm just going to do some very delicate moves to just smooth it. But I really, I can't remove any more tipping material because there's virtually none left. So surprisingly, we're pretty close. It's just a little bit scratchy in a few spots. Um, I might have to kind of floss it to get rid of it. There's a couple ways you can do this that I've done. Again, do not do anything that you see me do here. I'm not an expert at all. I'm just uh, having fun playing around with my pens, seeing if I can figure this out. So you can kind of floss it because there'll be a burr there and you can get really, really thin sheets of proper um, it'll have a little slight, slight abrasive in it. You can do that. You can also just sometimes get it out with a feeler gauge and I'll see how that feels. That's not too bad. Another thing you can do is you get your micro mesh pad. I'll go with say 6,000 or 8,000 here. I think this is the six and I'll do like a X pattern. So an X stroke where I kind of push down on the tines to open them just a little bit and I'll rotate and I'll come back the other way. So I'm just opening it just to get access to that inner edge. And that's about it. All you need there. I took the nib out so you can get a close look at what I'm seeing. And it is this nib slit. I talked about this in the video originally. So you can see the tipping there. I got a little bit, but it bows. So you have your nib slip. It's nib slit. It's supposed to taper down. And you can see it widens just a little bit there and then it snaps in tight. So this is really screwing things up. You can really see it here on the underside, see how it opens up there. And then she snaps back right tight together at the end. So even if I, if I open up the tines at the end to get a decent gap, it's a really big gap just before and the ink 
can creep it back up. So I almost have to bend the tipping, like the very end of the nib back, which is like suicidal, or potentially get in between the tines and remove a little bit of the inner edge of the tipping. And then uh, I can adjust things from there. I don't know if I can do that or not. This will be a tricky one. It does write, I can get it to write, but it doesn't write just properly. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I'm going to be playing here. I won't be able to record all the stuff I try. I'm going to see what I can do and then come back probably and tell you what I did, whether I made it better or made it worse. Maybe, uh, I'll put that down and do the other pens just to give myself a break. Well, I think I just managed to save it. I, I couldn't record everything and do the work and not screw it up at the same time. So I spent some work going over it with the pads, looking at it underneath the loop. These things, I'll talk about them in a minute, but they're kind of crappy. So, and not to mention, I'm trying to show you guys how to do this and just none of it's working. And by the way, if anything, this video might reduce the volume of emails I get asking me, can I send you a nib? <laughs> you want to send me your nib after what you just saw? Terrible idea. That's why there's professional dim meisters out there. So I spent some time and it's, it really has to do with that nib slit I showed earlier. It's just really wonky. Like it is all janky how that came through when they did that uh, wire EDM on that slit. So, I mean, it's cool design and everything, but from just a practicality purpose, ugh, yeah, I, I don't think it's the best thing, at least how they have it set up. The ink flow is getting messed up. It's messing up the tipping a little bit. So I'm not a fan of that slit, the standard slit. I don't think I would have these problems because there's just really nothing to go wrong there, but there's a number of things going wrong there. So that's been the main headwind with this nib. So I had to do my best to kind of curve the tipping. So if you got the tipping here, it was like the edges were all kind of curving in and then the slit was just, <laughs> it was a nightmare. Everything's going wrong with that nib slit. And I don't have the proper tools, but I spent some time. I'll give you another close up. I can get this writing pretty good. It's not amazing on paper like Rhodia, but everything else, it feels quite smooth. The flow is good. It's just going to be a little work in progress to get the very, very inside edge where that slit happens at the very end of the tipping to get those inside edges just bang on. Let's do a writing sample. This is how the pen was just a couple of days ago. This is my Mont Blanc 149. You can see the comparison in the video I just did. Let's get down in here just to show you the difference now. So here, the cross strokes are a little bit thicker. Now it's the cross strokes significantly thinner. And we got about the same on the down strokes. So we sort of flipped out what it's doing. It used to be kind of architect before. Now it's like a little bit of a, it's a fine cursive italic. I did this before recording, but you can see the ink color it looks very, very different. So this really, really suits my writing now. Let's do a couple words. A couple more writing samples. I got my Mont Blanc 149, which is what I wanted this pen to write with, custom nib I ground. And then my Visconti Homo Sapiens, which was done by Mark Bacchus. He did a amazing job on that one. So let's just show you, this is sort of the goal I was going for. It writes so nice. I wrote with this one, I go, yes, that's much smoother now, <laughs> but I can really feel it. But there's a little bit of the flair that we get. This works for sort of my style of printing. And here's the wing sunk. So we're actually, we're fairly close. I don't have quite as much in a downstroke as I do with the Mont Blanc, but they are very, very close. So I would say mission accomplished. This one's a little bit more wet. I purposely run this one a touch drier so I can use it on uh, kind of cheaper paper if I want to and it doesn't bleed through. And here's the uh, Visconti Homo Sapien. You can see just every now and then those little strokes are a little bit, a little bit of bounce, a little bit of line variation to it. They still want to fine tune it. I want to get rid of that little inside edge I can feel. So I'd, I would like to do that. 
Let me show you the other pen I did. So nice line variation, thinner cross strokes, thicker down strokes, nice and smooth. This one is done properly. I don't have any ink. This is still the ink that's in the feed from when I dip tested it. So it just missed a little bit one spot because, well, it's, it's not ink. That's just what's in the feed. This is the only part that drove me nuts. I touched off and just caught the end there. And yeah, you, you can polish it, but you can't put the paint back on. So this, this pen is actually for someone else. It's a gift and I put a custom grind on it for them. And I'm pretty annoyed with myself. I'll have to think about something I could maybe do to cover that before I send this off, but I'll get you a close up of this nib as well. And finally, there's this Diplomat Excellence A2. Now this is my pen, but not my nib. This nib was given uh, to me to, to repair. Now it's just, it's a personal favor. So again, you saw what I did here. Don't send me anything or ask me to. I, I just can't do it even if I had the, you know, if I wanted to, I, I couldn't, I just don't have the time. But they said they're either going to just order a new nib or they thought, hey, could you just give it a try and grind it? So I thought, well, whatever. They knew it except the challenge. Uh, so the tines were all kind of bent out of shape. I fixed it. It went back to writing like a perfect medium and it writes pretty well as a medium. And But I mentioned that how the nib slit goes, I'll give you a drawing here in a second. It's, it's screwing up the ink flow. It has a curve on the inside, so the ink flow will kind of shut off, but then it's ready to go at the end, so the ink has to get through. And I might, I don't know, I gotta work on this some more. I hope I can get it proper, but it might be beyond what the tools I have. But I'll show you what happens is you get nice line variation. I mean, you can already see it, it's skipping. So the ink flow is getting interrupted because of the sort of the damage to the tines and it's messing up the slit, but we got really nice line variation. It's very smooth. When it does write, it writes quite well, but we'll go high speed and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I have the desired effect, but it's just not in proper operational order. And there's nothing worse. Well, of course there's things way worse. Like. <laughs> many things but uh when it comes to fountain pens it's really annoying when you have a nib that like it feels great and it's giving what you want but when it skips it just drives you nuts so i gotta play with this some more before i send this back to them here's the wing sung nib and you can see how that it curves inward just at the very end like a little talon so it's grabbing on me so i might have to get in there and smooth that out but then the gap opens a bit too so it's it's been a battle it was way way worse than this before this is sort of as good as i can get it and this focus isn't helping the efforts anyways but you can see just the thinnest amount of tipping again don't contact me to do your nibs and this is why so if anything this is a, an ad for proper nib meisters out there this is the nib on the end so that looks like it's out of alignment but it's not it's just the angle you can see there it's okay this is what we're generally working with here this one turned out not too bad again you can see the black paint uh, again this is why i do like the stones because you go so slow you, <laughs> you're only like one stroke on the stones of an error versus thousands of rpms <laughs> in a blink of an eye but it does work quite well. It writes, it's nice and smooth, good line variation. So quite happy with this one. Here we go with the Diplomat. So you can see there that left tine kind of smushes, or maybe it's a combination of the left and the right, but it got that curve to it. We got a nice tine gap and then they just get way too close. And then it opens up a little bit at the end. If it's too tight, you don't get the ink flow. So it's, again, it's, <laughs> this one's a bit janky. I can uh, get the tipping so it's like properly parallel that square at the end, but then the ink flow is starved. What I might do, because I do have a fair amount of tipping on here, is just grind this back down further. So we can go down on this side here as we got lots of tipping left. And there's some goo in there, but uh, we can, we got lots to go. So grind that down more. And maybe at that point, the alignment will be better. But you can see those, those tines are, they're, Bent. So we got it back so it's close, but it's just, it is messing up the ink flow. 
and that is something I've not really done before is get tying straightened like that with the curve on the inside so you might be getting yourself a new nib you know who you are but I will give this a little more work and see what we can get to because it is writing quite nice but I just need the flow to keep up so overall everything was so so I'm pretty happy with how this writes from like line variation everything else I just want to see about improving that burr on the but that space there between the the tines this one's good ding the paint a bit that's annoying but it's working perfectly this one we still have some work to do but overall this was the main goal it writes quite well the wetness is nice it's it's close to what i want but that that slitting i think just get the standard nib slit instead of the heartbeat and you'll save yourself some anguish especially if you send it to someone to do Let's go over to these things, these little doodads. Now they're sort of okay. They are very front heavy. What you do is you clip them on. These, they're actually on a pair of uh, like safety glasses I was wearing, clip them on there. These are adjustable. There's a little screw so they open and close. And these ones are, yeah, three and a half times magnification, 420. <laughs> That's a friendly number. I think that is the focal point. So how far away in millimeters uh, that sounds about right i think i'll double check that anyways there'll be a link in the description down below so you can check those out they're really not my favorite now that i use them now these aren't the dental grade ones so the, you get what you pay for a lot of times and i didn't pay much so you're not getting much right so there are proper ones that are like a three or four hundred dollars i assume those be quite a bit nicer the other thing as i mentioned at the get-go was the chromatic aberrations the images, they are not clear. You especially get like a yellow sh uh, kind of shadow on stuff. So when you're trying to grind a nib, especially if it's gold, which is yellow, that's just to make matters worse though. But you, you need to see where that little point is. And if it's not crystal clear, you're, you're going to miss the mark. And so that was part of the other challenge too. So the cheap ones, I would say no go. Um, even a pair of reading glasses I find helps quite a bit. I'm going to find some ones that are a little bit stronger. These are just from the dollar store. I tried them out. Another thing, they actually improve your handwriting. So I, I found that if I wear these when I'm writing, I can really focus more. Uh, the, like the nib, everything fills a larger field of view and you can just focus on your writing, get a little bit more detailed, a little more hand control. So that's an aside, but it also does help for nib grinding. So I'm gonna find some, maybe just a basic fix, just get the highest powered reading glasses I can at the dollar store, and that might be uh, doing the trick there. So these are, yeah, if you wanna try them, try them, but don't expect too much anyways what can i say i hope you learned something uh, through watching this if anything you learned what not to do and asking to send me a pen or a nib to do this is a stupendously terrible idea send it to the professionals we'll leave it there we can chat down there in the comments there's a thumbs up button you should try hitting that and there's a circle button that says subscribe if you hit it we'll be able to catch you next time